This is a tutorial on geometric sequences. Let's start this tutorial by looking at this problem. Here we're told that there are four bacteria cells in a petri dish, and every hour these cells divide creating two duplicate cells from each original cell. So if we start with four bacteria cells, and we wait an hour, we'll have eight bacteria cells because all of those will have divided and we'll have two for each one. If we wait another hour, we'd end up with 16 bacteria cells because these eight have divided into 16 total. Wait another hour, we'll have 32. And wait another hour and we'll have 64 bacteria cells. Now these numbers, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, if we write them in order, we make them a sequence. A sequence is just a bunch of numbers written in order. Now, these numbers 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64, they represent a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence is when all the numbers in order are multiplied by the same number. So, we would have to multiply 4 by 2 to get 8. And if we multiply 8 by 2, we would get 16. If we multiply 16 by 2, we get 32. And if we multiply 32 by 2, we get 64. So this is a geometric sequence because every number in the sequence is multiplied by 2, or twice as big as the number previous. So now that we know what a geometric sequence is, let's figure out if these four sequences are geometric. Our first sequence, 1, 5, 25, and 125, well, if we look at 1 and 5, to get to 5 from 1, we would have to multiply this by 5. If we multiply 5 by 5, we do indeed get 25. If I multiply 25 by 5, I get 125. So yes, this one is a geometric sequence. Now let's look at 1,944, 324, 54, 9. These are counting down, but that's okay. If I take 1,944 and I divide it by 324, I get 6. So instead of dividing 1,944 by 6, instead let's multiply it by 1 sixth. Well, if I do that, I definitely get 324. If I multiply 324 by 1 sixth, I do indeed get 54. And if I multiply 54 by 1 sixth, I'm definitely going to get 9. So this one is also a geometric sequence. It's multiplied by the same number again and again. It just happens to be that that number is a fraction. But that's okay. It's still a geometric sequence. Let's look at our next example. We have 1, 6, 30, and 180. Well, to get 1 to 6, I would have to multiply it by 6. If I multiply 6 by 6, again, I'll get 36. Well, we have 30 is the next number in our sequence, so this one is not a geometric sequence. Now let's look at our last one. We have 2, negative 6, 18, and negative 54. Well, to get 2 to go to negative 6, I would have to multiply that by a negative 3. Now let's check the next number in our sequence. If I take negative 6 and I multiply that by negative 3, I get a positive 18. If I take positive 18 and I multiply that by negative 3, I do get a negative 54. So this is a geometric sequence. Another hint that this might have been a geometric sequence is seeing that the positive negative signs alternate. That just means you're multiplying by a negative number. So now that we can recognize a geometric sequence, let's talk about the formula of a geometric sequence. It is here, it's a to the n is equal to a to the 1 times r to the n minus 1. This r here is called the common ratio. And it's the number that we keep multiplying by in the sequence. Now this a to the n and this a to the 1, the a is just the term. So here we have the sequence 3, 12, 48, and 192. Well, 
3 is in the first position of the sequence. It's the first number that's listed. 12 is the second position. 48 would be the third position because it's the third number listed. And 192 would be the fourth. So this n here, that's just what position your number is in. So a to the n would be what term you have. a to the 1 would be our first term, so it would be 3. a to the 2, as we replace 2 for n, well that would be 12. a to the 3 would be 48. And a to the 4 would be 192. So now we can use this formula to solve huge sequences without having to keep counting up by multiplying by the same number again and again. So let's look at these two problems. We're told to find the next two terms in the sequence. And our first sequence is the number 8, 24, and 72. Well, let's use the formula here. a to the n is equal to a to the 1 times our common ratio, which is put to the n minus 1 power. Well, my a to the 1 here is 8. Now I need to find my common ratio, and I can get that by taking my a2 and plugging that back into this formula. If I do that, I'm solving for a2, which would be equal to a1 times our common ratio to the 2 minus 1 power, because I'm going to use my second term. If I plug those numbers in, I'll end up with 24 is equal to 8 times r to the 2 minus 1 power, which is just the first power. So I have 8r is equal to 24. If I divide both sides by 8, I get my r is equal to 3. So now that I've found my common ratio, I can keep using this formula to find our a4 and our a5, or the next two terms in the sequence. So if I'm solving for a4, or the fourth term in my sequence, I would just plug in a1, the first term in my sequence, which is just 8. I would plug in my common ratio, which I just solved for, which is 3. And I would put that to the 4 minus 1 power, because my n is 4. So I end up with 8 times 3 to the third power. Now, 3 to the third power is 27, but that's still multiplied by 8. 8 times 27 would mean our fourth term, then, is 216. Now, we can do the exact same thing to solve for our fifth term. Our fifth term is a to the fifth, and that's equal to our first term, which is 8. And we're going to multiply that by our common ratio, which is r. And that's going to be to the fifth minus one power, or the fourth power. Now, three to the fourth power is 81. And that's still multiplied by eight. And eight times 81 is 648. So our fifth term, then, is 648. Let's try this one more time. We have 1,944, 648, and 216. So first thing, I'm going to find my common ratio, because I have my first term, or a to the 1. I have my second term, or a to the 2. And our third term, a3. So to find my common ratio, I'm going to plug it into this formula for my a1. And I'm going to pick one of these other two terms. I'm going to pick a2 and plug that in for a to the n. If I do that, I'll have a2 is equal to a1, common ratio, and then 2 minus 1. Because it's my second term, my n is 2. So if I plug in 648 for a2, I plug in 1,944 for a1. That's times my common ratio, r. And to the 2 minus 1 is the first power. Divide both sides by 1944, and you'll get r is equal to one-third. So I have my common ratio, 
Now I'm going to use that back into this formula again to find my a4 or my fourth term and my a5 or my fifth term. So my fourth term then will equal my first term which is 1944 times my common ratio which is just one third. I just solved for that. And that one third is put to the n which is what term I'm looking for, the fourth term, minus one power. So I end up with 1944 times one third to the third power is four minus one. One third to the third power is one twenty seventh. So one thousand nine hundred and forty four times one twenty seventh is equal to seventy two. So our fourth term in this sequence is seventy two. Now you could just take this term and find our fifth term by multiplying 72 by one-third. If you do that, that would be equal to 24. But let's use our formula and check our work. We're looking for our fifth term. That's equal to our first term multiplied by one-third to the five, because it's our fifth term, minus one power. Our fifth term would be 1944 times one-third to the fourth power. That would be one over 81. 1,944 times 181st, or one over 81, is indeed 24. So our fifth term then is 24. So now let's do some slightly harder problems. Let's find the nth term of the sequence. Our first problem here, we're asked to find the tenth term of the sequence. We have a first term of 0.5, a second term of 1.5, a third term of 4.5, and a fourth term of 13.5. Well, the first thing we gotta do is find our common difference. And we're going to go back to using our geometric sequence formula where the term that we're looking for is just our first term times our common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So the first thing we've got to do is find our common ratio. I'm going to plug 0.5 in for our first term and 1.5 in for our second term. If I do that, my second term is equal to my first term times my common ratio to the n is 2 minus 1 power, or 1.5 is equal to 0 0.5 times our common ratio to the first power, is 2 minus 1. That would make r equal to 1.5 over 1 half, and that's just equal to 3. So our common ratio then is 3. So I have that, now I want to find the tenth term of the sequence. Well I could just keep multiplying these numbers by 3 and count up to 10. Or you can use this formula. We're looking for the tenth term. That's always equal to the first term, which in this case is 0 0.5, times our common ratio, r, which in this case is 3. And we're looking for the tenth term, so our n is 10, minus 1 power. So our tenth term would be equal to 0 0.5 times 3 to the ninth power. Now 3 to the ninth power is 19,683, but this is still multiplied by 0 0.5. So 19,683 times 0.5 would make our tenth term equal to 9,841.5. Let's try our next problem. Here we're asked to find the 67th term of the sequence with a common difference of negative 1. So we're told r is equal to negative 1. And the 63rd term is negative 27. 
So we're not given the first term in this problem. We're given the 63rd term and our common ratio. Well, we can still solve that. We'd be just plugging in A63 is equal to A1 times our common ratio. Our N is 63 and we're going to subtract 1. So we'd have R to the 62nd power. Now our 63rd term is a negative 27. That's equal to A1. Our R is negative 1. And that's to the 62nd power. Well, negative 1 to the 62nd power, that's even. So that's just positive 1. So we have positive 1 times our first term is equal to negative 27, which means our first term is equal to negative 27. So now we want to find the 67th term of the sequence. Well, our 67th term is equal to our first term, which is negative 27, times our common ratio, which is negative 1, and that's to the 67th minus 1 power, because we're looking for the 67th term. 67 minus 1 is 66, so we have negative 27 times negative 1 to the 66th power, 66 is even, so negative 1 becomes positive, and our 67th term is just negative 27. So that's how you can use the formula to find terms much further down in the sequence. And that also completes the tutorial on geometric sequences.